Christian Ministry Church. Every newcomer or somebody visiting us, we just give you a warm welcome. And thank God that you're here. And that we enter into worship and to praise and to the word all together so we can just draw closer to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Glad to be here in church. Amen. Praise God. And we want to make the difference between coming to church and being the church. Amen. I come to church, not to the building, but to the body of Christ and to be the church. What our part are we? We are the body of Christ. Amen. And he is our head. We are the bride of Christ. Amen. And praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we serve a great God, and that we, if you if you're new and you're not and you're not saved and you see all of this craziness going on, it looks to you like these people are raising their hands and Victor over there, he can't stand still, he just moves around for the glory of God. I never know what Michelle's going to do, but I tell you what, we are peculiar people because we are the bride of Christ, amen? Because that we are the body of Christ. And you look and you see us, all of us peculiar people, and you say, I I can't relate to them. I I can't fit in there. These people are, well, I tell you what, these people have a past, amen? Have you have a past? Were you sitting in the unsaved seat at one time? Glory to God, but God has changed you. Because of his love towards us. And just like he wants to change each and every one. I tell you what, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ today, my dear friend, you come to the right place. Amen? Amen. If you're tore up today and you feel like you're a mess, you come to the right place. Because you don't just have to come to church, but we can be the church. You can be the church. You can be that body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God relates to each and every one of us, and God has a place for each and every one of us. We're the body together, and the Bible says we're just fitly joined together, hallelujah, into a massive, massive worldwide church. There's a universal church, and then your local church, the universal church is anybody saved all around the planet, Amen? amen? Praise God. And we here in the local church relate and desire, hallelujah, to all come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. All come, hallelujah, to be that body of Christ that he can work in us. In every situation, in every problem, in every mess, he is the answer. And he's a, You got a testimony that you was a mess and God took care of it? Raise your hand, brothers and sisters. You was a mess, you was a mess, you was a mess. Some of you didn't raise your hand. I know you was a mess, okay? (laughs) You ain't talking. You ain't pulling nothing over on me, buddy. Praise God. Hallelujah. And even in our messes right now, we have. Our Heavenly Father wants to work it all out for your glory and for your... The word church, if you look in the Greek, when they're, they're telling you, the ones called out. First person I thought about being called out, that was Abraham. He was in a pagan place. And God spoke to him. I'm going to call you out. I'm going to call you out of your mess so that I may bless you. I want to bless you, Abraham, beyond you can comprehend. Never know children. He said, I'm going to make you a great nation impossible in man's eyes. You might think what you're into right now is impossible, but there's nothing impossible with God. Amen? Amen. He is on our side. Praise God. And he said, I will bless you coming in and going out. I'll make a great nation out of you, and you will bless the whole entire world through you. Not only does God want to make you a blessing, he wants to turn it around so much you're going to be blessing to other people. Amen? Amen? That's how God, thorough God works in our hearts and our lives. We turn it over to him. Praise God. Why do you think Christ came to 
to the cross for us. He loved us. And the first thing that always pops in our mind, he was obedient, obedient even to the death of the cross, amen? But that's just one first step that he made, amen? He, he always said, one of his titles that he, he proclaimed is, I'm the good shepherd. Right. Panic stricken, I... The other night, yesterday, I called Norma Jean. <laughs> Norma Jean, I can't print off of this stuff. Glory says, oh, we need new phones. Get new phones. Get Norma Jean. Oh, we need a, we need a new printer. Oh, get Norma Jean. <laughs> that poor lady. Glory, oh, she just loves me. I, just, I, I, said, I could just imagine. Picks up the phone. Glory's on the other end. She rolls her eyes. Now what? <laughs> Poor lady was so patient with me and with Gloria and got some things printed off for me. And uh, giving thanks unto the Father, which had made me, made us meet and be partakers of the inheritance of the saints. Can I get some more light up here, please? They say that people always have these high-tech things and it reflects, I'm old school. I write it out with my hand and then praise God. Hallelujah. Giving thanks to the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of salvation, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translate, translated us to the kingdom of his dear Son. Whose kingdom? Jesus' kingdom, amen? And whom we have the redemption through his blood. Whose blood? Jesus' blood. Even the forgiveness of our sins. Who in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him all things created, that is in heaven and that is in earth, the visible, the invisible, whether it be thrones, dominion, principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things exist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. The preeminence. It, it, it is something that is above all, over all, and they're definitely going into the Greek thing, nothing can compare to it. Jesus Christ is our preeminence, amen? What can you compare with Jesus? Hallelujah. What, what, what possibly thing can come close <laughs> to the love of God and to the, the comfort of God and to what all Christ pours into us, Amen. It changes us, amen? Praise God, the preeminence of God. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of the cross, and by him to the reconcile of all things unto him, by him I say whether they be things in the earth or things in heaven, and for you were sometimes alien and enemies in your minds by wicked works now have been reconciled in the body of his flesh death in the presence presents you holy and un and blameless in the God's sight wow if you don't know Jesus Christ okay if you don't know him or you're in a battle right now that's just ringing you. Or you find yourself just totally messed up. The world hits you blindsided. Amen. He's telling you that Jesus Christ, who died and rose again for the obedience of the Father, but more importantly, 
He wanted to shepherd you. He wanted to have a personal relationship. He wanted to dwell inside of you to make your life better. Because way back when, Adam and Eve turned around and had paradise. And out of their own disobedience, the world came crashing down. We live in a broken world. We live in a, in a broken environment. So Christ, who knew no sin, he said, I want to fellowship with these people. I want to give my life willingly and lay down because I don't want them to be in this broken world anymore. I don't want to have them tortured and tormented and have no fullness whatsoever because I am the fullness. I am love. I am the perfect way. I can fulfill their lives. Hallelujah. He looked down and seen the human race just scattered about in, in, in horrible situations. Terrible things happen to the body, but also terrible things happen to your mind too because there's the adversary that started this whole mess. Hallelujah. And he wants to keep it going. Hallelujah. But the good shepherd said, I have a way. I have my spirit and my heart, and I'll stick it inside of all these children that call upon my name, and I will lead them to a better place, and I will give them joy unspeakable, full of glory. I will give them new life in a new way. They don't have to be cast down. They don't have to be being destroyed by the adversary. I have preeminence. I have the power. I have the desire. Hallelujah. To redeem my people, to redeem my people, and give them life and have it more abundantly. Are you better off being saved, church? Let's hear an amen for the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You're better off now. Hallelujah. Any regrets? Not one I have. Amen. Only regret I have, well, I was church before, nine months before I was ever born. But I wish I was more obedient. Thank you, Jesus. But he loves me. He never condemns me. He just leads me by his loving hand. He is my good shepherd. It, when I was in Israel, they, you, you think of the, of the, um, and the shepherds are bringing their sheep in, they're doing this and doing that. And you'd think of this nice fenced in area, protected. Thorn bushes and all that. It's a big, huge circle. And the entrance that they come in. What does the good shepherd do? Put the sheep at night to keep the evil one away. He takes and he lies. He says, I am the gate. He lies right there. Anything had to get over top of them to get to his sheep. Amen? That's how he protects us. The Lord is my shepherd. He is the good shepherd. Amen? There's a bad one out there They're called the adversary, the Satan. And he wants to shepherd you, to take you over the cliff and to barbecue cue you up or feed you to the wolves. But this good shepherd, hallelujah, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Could you imagine that? There ain't nothing that you need and have in your life that he cannot provide. I shall not want. And the older you get, I is old, still younger than Shorty, but I is old. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> that guy is really old. <laughs> but yeah, he is. This brother says, yeah, he is. I shall not want. And the older I get, that peace of mind is what I crave more than anything. I just love watching you up there praising today. He just got lost in it. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God being upon him. Amen. That's what he wants to do. Is just open up our hearts and let him pour it on. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. There's a lot of junk out there. And this world will try to have. There's poison grass, okay? There is all kind of things, the thorns and the things. 
But Debbie, he says, I'm going to take you and I'm going to feed you. Proper, you're going to be healthy. Hallelujah. And you're going to be able to prosper because I'm going to take you to that place in me where you can feed and you can grow and you can be nourished and you can flourish. Leads me beside still waters. Sometimes when all that bright, they see the water and they're so thirsty and they jump there there and it's a bad current. They're swift away and they drown. Amen. I'm going to lead you by still waters. I'm going to give you refreshing. You're going you're to thirst no more because of my water. My, my, my still waters. We're going to flow inside of you. Amen. He restores my soul. Out there in the... In, in, there's bri- briars and things of this world and mud and everything else and get caught. You ever been caught in the thickets? Man alive and you think there's no way out. Or you're cluttered down with a bunch of mud on the wool and it flops you over and you can't get up. Restoring the soul was the thing is, it, it translated as redeeming the sheep out of a mess. Hallelujah. Sticking them up and putting them the right side. He restores my soul. Hallelujah. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He is the good shepherd. And he's calling you daughter. He's calling you son. He's calling you by his name. Praise God. And for that glory, my children, I'm going to show them the right way. I am not going to take them the wrong way. For his righteousness, the right way, he leads us. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of a death, I will fear no evil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a place in Israel over there. It's called the shadow of the valley of death. And it was laden with criminals and robbers. And and the people all feared to go that way. But I am the good shepherd. I am the protector. And what comes upon you, God's got that. Amen? Amen. God gets control of that. Maryland is anything that God can't control. Anything that God can't deliver you out of. Anything that, is there fear in you because the enemy is out there? Or do you can sit down and prepare at that table and have lunch with Jesus and praise his name? And as Satan is kept at bay, amen? Praise God. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Yep. What do you use this, the rod for? Directing you. The staff for reaches down all the cliffs and picking them up. He reached down for you. His staff is long enough to reach out far of a pit you fall into. His staff is long enough to grab you, to hook you, and bring you to him. Amen? You ever see that picture carrying that little old lamb on his shoulder, leaving the 99 coming after you? That's our God. That's our God. That's our God. Praise the name of Jesus. He anoints my head with oil. Out there it's really hot and all that. And they used to place oil on top of their heads. And that was actually a cooling. It would slowly evaporate. That was actually a cooling for the sheep. Do you ever feel the anointing on you? Do you ever feel that that power and that refreshing? Have you ever got overheated and too much concerned and tore up with worry? And all of a sudden you seek the name of Jesus. You say, Jesus, Jesus. And that refreshing and that anointing comes. He is preparing you, hallelujah, to bring you out of that mess and to bring you into blessing. Amen. Amen. My cup runneth over. 
Could you imagine the excess he's pouring into our lives? Undeserving. None of us are deserving it. But he just opens up the windows of heaven because he loves you. Because he's a good shepherd. Because he wants to have relationship with you. So much so that he died for you. All you have to do is ask him in your heart and say, Lord, forgive me. Take over my life. Praise God. And over that overflow, the ability to bless other people, amen? Out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Praise God. Hallelujah. We got to get hallelujah in our minds and our heads that God's got this. He loves me. There is no stopping any, nobody can stop me. Satan, the hell, the gates, everything. Nothing can stop me because Christ is watching over me and is having fellowship with me. And no matter what that situation is, I'll be delivered out of it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise God. He, Rose, he just loves us. And he has a plan, a perfect plan for each and every one of us. And no matter where you, where you are, he has a design plan to bless you, not to harm you, but to bless you. We, as a sheep, must know his voice. And when he calls out to us, sometimes... You feel so hurt and so down. Pat, you you think the pressure's so great, you can't even call out, amen? But he's there. He's watching over you. He's protecting you. You can't ask a brother and sister, say, hey, come pray with me. I'm hurting so bad. Take your brother and sister hand and unite with them in a prayer that will change their lives by letting it, surrendering it to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God, hallelujah. Christ, who rules, created all things. I can't imagine that. And they exist because of him. And he's concerned about you and your relationship. I shouldn't be saying this because he knows, he, he knows the number of hairs on your head. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bad illustration, me being up here, but oh. <laughs> he does. I still do. It's in my upper closet. <laughs> <laughs> But he loves us. Are you willing to give Jesus a try in your life? When he formed you, he made you. He put inside you a measure of faith that each and every one of us have, and that's what led us to salvation. Amen? That faith working inside of your heart and your life brought you to the cross. And that same faith, and after you know him and you experienced him, It grows inside of us to reach out no matter how downtrodden or your circumstances are. He is there. He is there to love on you. He died so that he could be the head of the body. He died so that you can be his bride. He died so he can have a relationship with you and keep you out of messes and deliver every one of us from our mess and, our, and, and give us a life joyful. He's coming back. He's coming back. We talked before he's going to come back and 
that the eastern gate, the bronze, beautiful, the sunrise hits it and that. A triumphant entry into Jerusalem, that's where he went through. John and, and Peter, the gate beautiful, the same gate. The crippled man for 40 years. Oh, yeah. One touch in the name of Jesus. He was leaping and shouting and dancing right through that gate into the presence of God, into their, into their temple. One touch of Jesus. One touch from Jesus can change your life by you pouring out your heart to Him and totally surrendering and saying, God, you got this. I can't handle it. Take over, Jesus. Take over. Praise God. As they come up and they're going to sing a song, praise the Lord. I like us to